Hey everybody, Breeze87 back here again, like I told you. I'm going to start trying to make some more videos. Um, first of all, let me just say that I um, just want to thank everybody for keeping up and throwing me out some good ideas. And uh, I've been reading a lot of the... Um, lately I've been, watching, I've been reading a lot about what... Uh, the people are really glad for me to keep Breeze 87 still running and going and I will be doing this for a while so um, like I said I'm going through a period right now where I'm going to be moving pretty soon and also I'm going to be making better videos so but I'm in a little bit of a transition I'm going to be moving in about a month from now um, and uh, with me and a friend of mine and we're going to be doing some great things we are um, what one of the things that we want to do when we go is we want to find I want to find a place where it's large enough so that I can put up like a green screen and have like a little studio to put in front of you for all you guys so um, what did I want to talk to you guys about uh, recently I have been reading a lot of um, watching a lot of videos and reading a lot of things about um, gay people and suicide attempts on bullying. Uh, I normally don't really talk about things like this because um, I don't know how to... I, I, I don't know what it's like to, to be gay because I'm not. But I do know a little bit uh, of something about suicide. <clears throat> um... And I'm going to share that with you uh, simply because maybe it might help someone out there watching this video clip and they might just go, oh, wow. Um, it was 13 years ago. And, well, actually, 14, 15 years ago. Yeah, something 15, 13, 14, 15 years ago. Um, it, there was a lot of things going on in my uh, head in the 90s. And um, there was a lot of things that there was a whole transition that was going on in my life, and it rocked me to the core. Um, my mom and dad had split up. Uh, we had just lost two dogs. Uh, one was Sissy, my dog Sissy, that she was a white German Shepherd, and we had her for like 13 years. And she passed away prior to like five years, but it still stuck with me. And then we had another dog named Max who was a little dog about yay big, you know, and um, he passed away, and my fam, my mom and dad were getting a divorce, well, they weren't getting a divorce, that didn't happen until long ago, but they were um, separating, and this came to a very shock to me, but I, I kind of knew it was going to happen in some ways because I could hear them arguing with each other in the distance uh, upstairs. Because I lived downstairs in, in an apartment down where my father... My father had... Uh, the top stairs was my father's place, and the downstairs was like this, you know, um, trashy kind of, you know, paper-thin walls type of apartment that was for me and I lived down there for many many years anyway um, in my mind I just couldn't handle it and I, I, I wasn't fitting in with a lot of people at that time and it really uh, and all the all my old friends that I was with were were uh, were, were assholes they were jerks anyway I um, I had enough of it, and I really just, you know, I was like, I'm sick and tired of this bullshit. I'm sick. I, I'm, you know, trying to fit in, trying to do all this kind of stuff, and I'm being used. I'm just going to end it right here. And I went upstairs, and my father had a shotgun up there. And I went, grabbed it, and I went downstairs to use it. And I put... I remember I was sitting my, with my back against the wall, and um, and I remember putting it uh, into my mouth. I could feel it because he would oil it up and make it look really shiny, and I could taste the oil within there, and it was loaded. <laughs> so what I did was is that I sat there, and then for some strange reason, and I'm not 
a religious person. I'm agnostic. But for some strange reason, something told me in my head, hey, why don't you play some music before you kill yourself? You know, I was like, oh, well, that's stupid. You know, it's like, why would I want to do that? And um, so what I did is I had an old shoe box that had some cassette tapes that were in it. And I took one of them out and I put it into the um, tape player. And I, it was one of those kinds where it would, when you, it, it would rewind back to where there's a black hole. For some of you who don't know that, you know, it's like when the song is over, it, it, uh, it goes into it like it disappears and you go on to the next one, okay, next song. So it was one of those that just backed up and went, you know, and went back to the beginning of the song and stopped. So when it did that, it, it, it automatically played and it started playing. And I remember hearing a, it was Meatloaf, mm -hmm, and it was a song called um, Heaven Can Wait. And if you ever hear that song, believe me, I mean, every time I hear that song, I start tearing up. Um, but anyway, I, and this is the reason why, I, uh, I remember hearing that song and I went back to, you know, I was going to take the gun and do what I had to do. And I remember just hearing that song, and it just echoed, echoed in, in, inside of my head. And I was like going, whoa, wait a minute, this is some heavy shit. And um, I remember visions of my family, um, my uh, mom, dad, brothers, cousins, and friends... And I pictured them um, sitting around this coffin, and it was mine. And I could see it being lowered into the ground. And the lower it got, the more people started crying, you know. And then it started going up, even to people I even I didn't even know. So the more it came down, then you could hear all the crying and, and shit like that. And then I remember seeing in this vision me standing behind everybody with my mouth open and going, oh my God, what have I done? And at that point, I got out of that dream and I remember I took the gun out of my mouth and put it on the ground. And um, I looked at it and I said, never more, you know. And that's not an Edgar Allan Poe kind of thing. But I just put it on the ground and I said, never more. I'm not going to do this anymore. And I didn't. What it basically told me, what it, all this thing went through my head was, is yes, I was going through a rough time in my life. But, and I know this is a catchy phrase to say, which is like, it's like it gets better. Well, for me, it kind of did. Because for me, I could see that there was a light at the end of the tunnel. There was somebody there. There, there was something inside of me that, that, that said, it will get better, promise you, it will. And it has. Um, and I think in my life now, it's going to get even better. So, um, I'm, I'm going to tell this to everybody, all, and even if you're gay and you, you haven't come out of the closet yet, and you, you're really kind of worried and all that kind of stuff, um, about coming out of the closet, um, first of all, um, you are supported by a lot of people. You are supportive of, by, by people you don't even know that are there for you and um, it's nowadays it's difficult for a lot of uh, gay teens to come out of the closet and to admit their sexuality um, but to use suicide as a way of getting away from that is an extreme version of running away from your uh, problems um, what I want to tell everybody out there is you are a strong person. You can help out. You can do whatever you want to. There's just the big hurdle of accepting who you are. And I think that was the problem with me. I 
didn't know who I was and I just couldn't accept who I was because I thought I wanted to fit in with all these other kind of groups and 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 and, and just meld you know just kind of mingle within them and all but but the thing about it is I learned after this experience that I am a unique person and unique people are often very alone you know uh, because we don't fall along with really what society says or the crowd I mean right now I mean I should be uh, I should be married and have kids and I don't I'm still single so but um, if you're gay who cares you've got to really reach into yourself and really think about what you're about ready to do it's a difficult time for of course you know gay people in 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 this world because you can't um there are certain places you can't get married there are certain places you can't even walk around without people you know saying you know despising this and stuff like that but you got to keep strong you know i mean yes it does get better does it get really better that all depends upon you and what you make out of it if you want to be um, if if you're not ready to come out well then that's your choice but don't let bullies don't let people uh, around you um, make you think that you, you know that you're not worth anything because you're gay and above all don't think about suicide as an option for God's sakes don't think about it because if you do then it gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. You've got to think to yourself that yes, it's going to get better, but I have to get better with inside myself. I have to get, I have to have the strength to be strong and brave through this stupid crapple of fucking shit. Because people are going to be mean, but the only reason why they're mean is because they don't understand about it you know I understand about gay people because my mom is gay I understand about you know I have some gay friends of mine I'm around it and they're the nicest people you ever meet but when I hear these young teens committing suicide because of bullies that say this kind of crap to them it just makes me think they, they need to get they need to be around more positive people and more stronger people and that's the that's the thing about it. I don't want anybody to feel as though you know you're you're um, you're left out. You won't. You're around a lot of good people. So please, 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 just be strong. Be tough. You're only in high school like four years. One time, actually. There's one time you're in high school and you got to go through it for four years. But you can brave this thing. And if you you have to also remember about words and I know this sounds childish but it's the truth sticks and stones may break my bones but names will never hurt me the reason why names will never hurt you is because you've got to be strong enough in order to look at those things and say mm -mm, you know and be strong and just look the other way because they are trying to intimidate you to do something bad to yourself they don't really care about you. They just want to get you pissed off enough to make you feel like shit. Anyway, uh, that's my rant. <laughs> I'm sticking with it. And um, I'm probably going to give another one pretty soon. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing... Uh, I'm, i got to get ready to, to move here. There's a lot of shit i got to take care of right now. Um, but... Um, Hang in there, everybody, and I will see you guys, hopefully, um, before I move. Um, I'll be making a couple more, and then when I do move, I'm probably going to be gone for about maybe about a couple of weeks. But, um, and if you want to, uh, please share this video with friends of yours who, if they're gay or if they just have going through a bad shit, Share this video with him, please. And if you like it, please like me down there. Right there. Like it. Okay? If you like it. If you don't, well. Anyway, you got to 
I don't know. <laughs> anyway, but uh, I'm just going to say this one, before I go. Um, thanks, everybody, to who answers my videos and writes little comments. I, I, I read them all, and I do. And I promise you that within the next month, month and a half, or two months, uh, there will be better videos, better quality videos right now. And I hope to hear from you guys pretty soon. You know, if you want to comment on me, please do. If you want a video comment on me, uh, please do. Um, and I will see you guys later. See ya.